Is it just weight or lipedema? Why this painful condition is missed so often. Imagine going to the doctor year after year being told that the heaviness in your legs is just a matter of eating less and moving more, only to find that no matter how hard you diet or how many miles you walk, your lower body simply doesn't change. For millions of women, this is not a failure of willpower. It's a medical reality called lipedema. It's a condition that is often caught in a trap of misunderstanding, leaving patients feeling dismissed, defeated, and in physical pain. In this video, I'm going to break down exactly what lipedema is and why it's so frequently misdiagnosed as simple obesity or other swelling disorders. We'll look at the massive differences between normal fat and lipedema fat, and I'll explain the three main reasons doctors often miss the signs, from a lack of medical training to the bias that often comes with weight. Then we'll dive into the telltale signs you can check for yourself, like the cuff at the ankles, easy bruising, and that specific type of tenderness that standard fat just doesn't have. I'll also go over the hormonal links that trigger this condition and give you a clear path forward on how to manage it. My goal today is to help you understand that if you're struggling with this, it's not your fault and there are real answers available. Welcome back. I'm Dr. John Truback, cardiovascular surgeon, and I specialize in venous disease. And with that, I've seen many, many patients with lymphedema and lipedema. So this is an area of real expertise for me. In my practice, I always aim to reduce complications and help my patients achieve the best possible outcomes, no matter what the disease problem. With these videos, I hope to inform and even entertain you with interesting medical topics so you can make informed decisions when it comes to your own health. Today's subject, why lipedema is often misdiagnosed, is a topic that's very close to my heart because it involves so much unnecessary patient suffering. Today's video is only a part of the story. I've made many other videos and plan to make more. I also have another YouTube channel called the LymphCast channel, where there are many, many great interviews and a tremendous amount of information. So I hope you'll visit that as well if this is a subject that is important to you. Also, you can get my health and wellness blog by following the link in my bio where there's a tremendous amount of great information. So with regard to lipedema, let's look at the evidence. Let's start by defining what we're actually talking about. Lipedema is a chronic medical condition that almost exclusively affects women. It involves a very specific symmetrical buildup of fat in the legs, hips, and sometimes in the arms. But here's the catch. This is not normal fat. In the medical world, we call fat adipose tissue, and usually it serves as a place for the body to store energy, excess calories, get stored as fat. But in lipedema, the fat cells are essentially sick or malfunctioning. They grow in size in a way that's totally out of proportion with the rest of the body, and they become trapped in a state of chronic inflammation. Because this fat is different on a cellular level, it does not respond to calorie restriction or exercise the way typical fat does. And that can be really, really frustrating for people. This is why a woman with lipedema can have a very thin upper body and a much larger lower body that's really out of proportion to the rest of her figure. And no matter how little she eats, that proportionality or disproportionality remains the same. The biggest tragedy of this condition is how often it's misdiagnosed, misunderstood, and dismissed. The most common mistake is that it's simply labeled as obesity. When a patient walks into a clinic with large legs, many doctors who have only received a few minutes of training on this specific condition in medical school, or maybe not none at all, immediately assume that it's a lifestyle issue. They see a high body mass index or BMI and stop looking for other causes. This is incredibly frustrating for patients who know deep down inside that their body is reacting differently than everyone else's. This weight bias in medicine is the number one reason that lipedema often goes unnoticed and undiagnosed for decades in a person's life. This condition is also often confused with lymphedema. The lymphatic system is sort of a trash collection system. It picks up excess fluid, lymphatic fluid, that collects in the soft tissues and moves it through lymph nodes to take out any foreign invaders like bacteria, viruses, funguses, and even cancer cells. And it moves that fluid back through the system, back into the venous circulation. And when you have an abnormally functioning lymphatic system, any blockage in the system, an underdevelopment of the system, injury to the system, etc., fluid can build up in the body and cause swelling. That can be in the leg, that can also be in the abdomen, the breast, the upper extremity, the neck, the face, any place, quite frankly. 
So lipedema and lymphedema are actually quite different. They're two different diseases. In lymphedema, the swelling usually starts in the feet and hands and is often just on one side, swelling on the top of the foot. What we call the dorsum of the foot is a classic sign of lymphedema. It's what we call sort of a muffin top appearance on the dorsum of the foot. In lipedema, the swelling is almost always perfectly symmetrical in both legs and actually can be difficult to even demonstrate any actual swelling in lipedema. So therefore, the name can be a little bit confusing at times. And here's the most important marker. It almost always spares the feet and hands. That's lipedema. Usually the swelling or the fat deposition is cut off right at the wrist or the ankle. It's what we call sort of that baby doll look where there's a very, very well-defined ring or cuff right at the foot or ankle. If you have large, heavy legs, but your feet look completely normal and thin, that's a very strong red flag for lipedema. This is not typical of lymphedema or general obesity. Now, why does the fat in lipedema behave so strangely? To understand that, we have to look at the texture and the pain. Normal fat is usually soft and painless. Lipedema fat is often described as feeling like beans in a bean bag or small pebbles under the skin. Lipedema fat can be quite firm, and most importantly, it's often very tender to the touch. Patients will tell me that even a pet jumping on their lap or a child grabbing their leg can cause sharp localized pain. Even a loved one putting their arm around you to hug you or to squeeze you can cause pain. Easy bruising is another major sign of lipedema because the fat is inflamed and it puts pressure on the tiny blood vessels that surround the fat cells. People with lipedema often find bruises on their legs and have no idea how they got there. True of the arm as well. If you find yourself bruising like a peach for no reason and your legs feel heavy and painful by the end of the day, you're likely dealing with more than just a weight issue. We also have to talk about that cuff sign that I mentioned. This is one of the most reliable ways to distinguish lipedema from other types of swelling. Because the condition always spares the feet, the fat buildup often stops abruptly just above the ankle bones. This creates a literal cuff or a shelf that the fat tissue hangs over. It almost looks like somebody's put a tight rubber band right above the foot or right above the hand, and you see a very well demarcated line that stops the lipedema tissue from the normal tissue. This physical sign is a clear sign that the fat distribution is abnormal and that there is a disorder going on likely to be lipedema. Yet this is often ignored on standard physical examination because the doctor is simply not well educated in this area and is focusing only on the numbers on the scale, for example, or calculating your BMI. The timing of when this condition starts is another reason it's often missed. Lipedema is heavily linked to hormonal shifts. It's almost always triggered or worsened during major life events like puberty, pregnancy, or menopause. This tells us that estrogen and other hormones play a massive role in signaling these specific fat cells to grow out of control and out of proportion to cells in other parts of the body. Because it starts during these emotional and physical transitions, it is often dismissed as baby weight or puberty changes, causing the patient to lose precious years where they could have been managing the condition before it progressed. As a surgeon, I see the long-term effects of these misdiagnoses. When lipedema is left alone for years, it can lead to a secondary problem called lympholipedema. This happens when the heavy fat deposits finally become so large that they physically crush or obstruct the lymphatic vessels, causing fluid to back up on top of the fat. This makes the legs even heavier and leads to skin changes and a much higher risk of infections that we call cellulitis. We also see a major impact on the joints. Carrying that extra asymmetrical weight puts an enormous strain on the knees and hips, often leading to premature arthritis and mobility issues. If we could just catch this in stage one, we could save so many women from needing joint replacements or dealing with permanent mobility loss later in life. So how do we fix the system? It starts with education, and that's what I'm doing here. This, this video and others like it are not just for the public, but it's for my colleagues who are physicians, nurses, physicians assistants, nurse practitioners, therapists, all kinds of people in the health and medical field 
to raise their awareness and to be more educated about lipedema. We need doctors to understand that fat is not a one-size-fits-all world. We need to move away from the BMI as the only measure of health and start looking at the why behind the weight. If a patient says their legs hurt and they can't lose weight through diet, we need to believe them. We need to look at the distribution of the fat, sparing the trunk generally, being abnormally deposited on the hips, buttocks, thighs, upper arms, arm area. These are telltale signs. And we need to look for changes in the skin that become mattress-like or cottage cheese-like, lumpy and bumpy, as opposed to just typical cellulite changes. We look for swelling in the ankles and that lympholipedema change. In lipedema, the skin usually bounces right back because it's fat and not fluid. These simple physical checks can change a patient's life in under 60 seconds. So we need to educate doctors, nurses, and other practitioners. The treatment for lipedema is also very different from the treatment for obesity. Since the fat's resistant to traditional dieting, we focus on reducing inflammation. This involves a low inflammation way of eating or an anti-inflammatory diet, often focusing on whole foods and avoiding processed sugars that fuel the fire in those fat cells. We also use medical grade compression garments, graduated compression. These are not your standard socks. These are strong, flat knit garments that help support the tissues and keep the fluid from building up on top of the fat. Manual lymphatic drainage, which is a very specialized gentle massage technique, can also help to move fluid out of the legs and reduce the heavy, painful feeling and swelling. In some cases, specialized liposuction that protects the lymphatic system is the only way to really physically remove excess fat and the diseased tissue that occurs in this inflammatory response. And this can help to restore mobility as well as markedly decrease symptoms. I want you to hear this clearly. If your legs feel like lead, if they bruise easily, if you've been told for years that you just need to try harder to lose weight, you're not alone. You're not lazy and you're not failing. And it's not your fault you likely have a recognized medical condition that deserves a real treatment plan. Getting a proper diagnosis is the first step toward taking your life back. It allows you to stop the cycle of shame and starts the cycle of healing. We've covered a lot today. We've talked about why lipedema fat is different from normal fat and why the feet sparing, the hand sparing, and the cuff sign are so important for a correct diagnosis. We explored the reasons the medical community often misses the mark from weight bias to a lack of training and a lack of understanding. And we looked at how hormones trigger these changes during puberty, pregnancy, and menopause. Most importantly, we talked about how management is about more than just a treadmill. It's about compression, nutrition, dietary supplements like micronized purified flavonoid fraction, diosmin, hesperidin, and protecting your lymphatic system. If you're looking for more detailed information on the specific stages of lipedema, please see my other videos on this subject. I've made many. There are many more to come. And also check out my other channel on YouTube called The LymphCast Podcast or The LymphCast. You'll find many, many great videos there with interviews with experts from around the world and around the United States and a tremendous resource to learn more about lipedema, lymphedema, the difference between the two and the over overlap of the two. Also, for more information on health and wellness, please check out my health and wellness blog or newsletter, if you will. And to find that, you can just go to the link in my bio. It'll take you right there. There's a lot of tremendous information there as well. One of the things I hope is that through your own education and your own knowledge on these subjects, you can take that information to your doctor to help get a proper diagnosis. Once your doctor is aware of what's going on, he or she can guide you to a specialist who may be able to help you even more thoroughly. Hey, I'm Dr. John Chuback, board certified cardiovascular surgeon specializing in venous and lymphatic disorders and also lipedema. And I hope to see you in the next video.